got it recording, but it wasn't recording anything. All right. Okay. I've got to enable the microphone and camera and then you have to sit there and actually share the microphone and camera or vice versa, whatever you got to do. Do it again a second time. Even though you've already told it in there and it's verified, had you verified it's work, and then it can go ahead and use it. So that's step by step. So in that case, you, as far as subnetting, like I was just describing, you couldn't do because you don't have an old lot cat available to you. Okay? Every got cat genius. So a lot of times you will see, as far as private addresses given, all the things we're going to go over today, that a lot of times they're not going to do what we're going to do. Other than your ISPs are going to be using it to only issue out a small address, number of addresses to each organization. Okay? Because I'm not sure, I haven't looked on these to see, but some of the campuses have got 172 addresses, some of them have got 10 on. Um, 10 would probably be a better way to go on it because you've got two optics you can play with to use for networking purposes, as long as you don't have more than 254 devices on there. If you do, you'd still have one to play with. Okay? So you can break it down in smaller groups. That's what you're going to be able to do. So um, that's going to be the approach. Now, what I'm going to go through here is I'm going to use this slide presentation. Um, that I used last fall when I taught class for CompTIA for their CompTIA Instructor Network, which is when it says CLN up in the corner. These slides, I developed these slides and then they stuck them into their slide deck. And then I pulled off their couple of extra slides and stuff on the front of it to get back to my slides. Because actually I couldn't find this deck of slides. The other two, three I could find, but I don't know where this deck went to. Um, I'm actually going to use the same slide deck tomorrow because I'm teaching a class for the North Carolina computer instructors and I'm going to go through exactly the same one we're going to go through right now. The other one is it is in your um, blackboard. <clears throat> I just put it there that if you want to pull it up there and look specifically at it or look at it again later, you can. That it's sitting in course documents. Okay? So, we're doing with IP version 4 submitting here. Um, so, a couple of big things on this, like I've already mentioned, we're borrowing a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to take this octet that's reserved for hosts and we're going to borrow bits from it to create subnets. And create small groups on it. Now we're not going to have one, we won't have many devices we can get on our network total, and we're going to have a smaller number per subnet, obviously. Okay. So to do this, we're going to change that byte or octet, this one, and express it in binary. Okay, so we're going to work it from binary. So we know how many bits goes into that one. Into that. Into that. No, into that part. Into that part. There's eight, right? So we're going to have eight. There's eight bits there. Okay? So we're going to work with it in binary. And then we're going to use. Um, and then it's if we've got multiple octets for hosts, like on class A address, we've got three of them. We're going to use the, we're going to be working with the leftmost one. Okay, so this is the one we would be working with. In this case, there's only one octet for the host, so there's not any choices on it. 
and then we're going to leave the network bytes or octets as they were. So the stuff to the left, that's the network ones, is not being touched. The first thing we got to determine is how many bits do we need to borrow? Okay. Two ways we can do that. We can either, if we know how many subnets we want, and if you get a question on test, they're either going to tell you they want so many subnets, or they're going to tell you they want so many hosts per subnet. So follow on that. If we know how many subnets we want, then we're going to borrow from the left. So we're going to borrow how many ever bits it takes to get these subnets. Okay? If we know how many hosts we want per subnet, we're going to count from the right. And you could be asked, um, <clears throat> and on tests that I've seen, and really tests y'all will have, you really won't have it in here, as far as I know, it shouldn't be the same thing out here. But on certification tests, questions will usually be that they want to know about information on the third subnet that you've created. What's the broadcast address of the third subnet, or what's the beginning host number on the third subnet, or it may be the fourth subnet or whatever, but they're going to ask you about a specific subnet. When you get asked that, you don't have to do everything we're going to do in just a minute. You don't have to calculate for every subnet. So follow on that. You only have to calculate as far as it goes you need to get to the one you want. So if you want a third subnet, you only have to catch those first three subnets. If they ask you about information on the third subnet. If you have to be borrowing up bits where you had um, 16 subnets, you don't have to worry about it, 4 through 16. Okay, so everybody follow that? So that's just a little cheat sheet there. I right, to make it simpler, because I know people that have sat there and spend all their time calculating out the whole thing and then go, they run out of time to get the certification. I'm going, what did you do? And then I'm in, I'm going, well, you spent, you used up your time doing stuff that had nothing to do with the test. And that uh, you just have to be able to calculate as far as you need for the answer they're asking you for right there. And I'm actually going to show you all some shortcuts on that one, too. So, if this is our address we were given, that we're working off of, that's the network address of 192.16.1.0. So that's a private address. That's a public address, you notice that. Um, because it's not 192.168. Okay, that's 192.16, so that's actually a public address that's used out there by someone. Um, I really think I'm going to be here right there, but I'm going to see. Look at that screen, because I really think the idea. Yeah, that should be 168. Um, so that's the type that you should be paid to. So like I said, you should normally, when you're doing demonstrations and stuff, use private addresses. Let's so assume there's an eight right there. So we were told we want to get eight subnets off of this in this network, okay? We were given that. There's our subnet mask to this project 5.0, which would be, this is a class C address. Um, the last byte is the host area, which is eight zeros in binary. Um, 
and then we will label our columns. And that's where it gets a little tricky here in the PowerPoint. But we would label our columns. But here's the thing on when we're working with given the number of subnets, not given the number of posts. We will actually work backwards. Okay. The notice column rate is there, one, two, four, eight. That actually is the opposite of what I talked to in binary. Because in binary, it should be one, two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on. If we're trying to find how many bits we're going to borrow for the subnets, we're going to label it backwards just for this purpose, not for actually when we come up with the number of each subnet, but just for the purpose of determining how many bits are we going to borrow. So we follow that part. So we need eight subnets, so we're going to need to go to a big enough number here that's going to be bigger or equal to the number of subnets we need. Okay. Because if we so then we know it's going to go here. Now the subnet zero used to be unusable. Now it's usable. And most routers are going to allow you to use subnet zero. Okay? So the zero is going to be usable on it as far as the network number. Not as far as post number. The post zero is not usable. Okay? Because that's actually the network. But it used to be that also subnet zero was unusable too, but we're going to assume it's usable. Question on a test normally will come straight out and check that. That it will say subnet zero is usable. Okay? So let's go a little bit because you used it for a long time. So zeros are the network. So the zero one is the network. The one 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 is the broadcast address in the host area, not in the borrowed host. And in this case, we need eight subnets, but we're actually going to have to, have to borrow um, enough for fifteen subnets. So we're going to have to borrow four bits. Because we're going to lose out of this the addresses on. Okay? So you're not going to borrow four. Um, so you got to get up to a big enough number. Now, we're going to end up with a subnet mask then you know, of this 240. Where do we get that from? Okay. So we're going to borrow the first four bits. Once we're borrowing them in the subnet mass, that then means those first four bits become ones in that last byte. They were zeros because it's host area. Now it will be network area. So this is our last four last byte. We're going to borrow these first four positions. I'll see that. Which is going to turn in the subnet mask them to ones. Now, to find out oh, and then to find out what our value is to get the 240, we're going to label our columns from the right, which I didn't label them all right here. But we're going to do the ones, two, four, eight, and then the 16s, the 32s. 64s and the 128s. I follow that. I didn't label the first four, you just labeled them across. Could be labeled right there. But here's the ones we're going to add up. It's these four. There's 128, 64, 32, and 16. Add them up, we get 240, which will be our last five last octets on um, submit mass map. Um, 240 instead of zero. But plus half of it used to create subnets. Um, the other rule is the last two positions, you cannot borrow to that spot. You can only borrow to the six bits. 
which I don't think borrowed the last two bits in the last in the rightmost network call. Okay. Or in the leftmost host call correction. Because you got past age four host number still. So you've got to read at least two bits per host. Because that's going to allow you two usable hosts if you keep two bits. And there's actually a use for that out there, and people will submit down to that spot intentionally. Because when you're doing a router to router communication, the only two, that's a subnet between, or a network between the two routers, there's only two addresses on that network, the two ends of the routers. Okay? So if you have more than that, you're wasting. So you'll quite often see for those where you're connecting router to router that you'll break that down to all the way down to just using two bits for it. Because you're not wasting um, bits on it. So now we're going to build the table. And we're going to look at it. And we're going to see what all our addresses are available to us on each subnet. And we're going to build a table of this. What we're going to do, which is what I got built here. We've established all right. That's what we were given. And then let me see what's on the next one. We should have the 240 up there as what our um, something that what our net is, okay? I don't. Okay. I'm going to try to remember a little bit of stuff. That's right. And that to keep 40, and this last one is 4140. So I've given it in the general, but not the other. So now we're going to build the table. And I've actually gone through slide by slide. So, and binary, we're First subnet, we're using, remember I said zero is usable. So we will start with zero in this first four. And then the last four is the host. And I've bolded the network portion. So our beginning range of usable addresses that we're going to assign to a host would be the first number after the network address, which would be a one in the host portion. Follow that. But in the host portion, as far as the host port part, we can use anything that's not all zeros in the host portion or all ones in the host portion. And so like I said here, if it was three bits, we couldn't use zero, 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 and we couldn't use one, 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 because zero, zero, zero will be the network address. One, 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 and remember this isn't binary, one, one, one will be the network, it will be the broadcast address, okay, or the subnet. So that means effectively, from what you already know about binary, that the largest one we can use is one one zero. Let's remember one 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 three ones would be take off one binary one from three ones would change that last position to a zero but not affect the others. And the lowest one that we could use is zero zero one. Zero 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 can't use but we use the next one which would be a one one follow zero. 
So we end up with this first line set up of that here in the binary or the network address, it's all zeros for setting that line up. The first host number we can use is one, four zeros, three zeros, and a one, so seven zeros and a one. The end position, the highest host number we can use, still four zeros because that's the subnet we're on, all zeros. And then one, 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 zero, because that's the biggest number we can put in binary in the host area. And then the broadcast is all ones in the host area. And there is that converts actually all seven zeros and a one converts to a decimal one. Four zeros followed by one one zero will actually convert to fourteen if y'all remember that. So we can label our columns as one, two, four, eight. Eight plus four is twelve, plus two is fourteen. And in this case, the broadcast address would be fifteen. Because it's four zeros followed by four ones, and four ones from when y'all learn binary versions is 15. So that's the first subject. Now we want to build the next subnet. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one to our borrowed portion. We borrowed four bits. So we're going to add a one to this first four bits that's borrowed. Okay. So in this case, because we're borrowing four bits, we'll add a one in this first four bits. And so that becomes zero, 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 one, and then the four zeros. So following along how that's working. So now that means we'll build the second row on that table. So now we've got zero, 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 one, that is binary here, but it's also that's your network address. You'll see the label is network, but I'll put it as binary before we put it in the binary. So a lot of times in the table, you may see that as network. And a lot of times, the eyeball is table. I'll say network. So we've got one there, and we've got all zeros in the host portion. That is the 16's column, which was 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, so this value will be 16. So now we want the first host address, the first usable host address. So we'll increase the next, increase the host part by 1. We'll put a 1 in it, which is in the last 4 bits. Okay. So now we've got a 1 in the 16's column, because that's the last of the network portion. And we've got a 1 in the last position of the host portion. Well, it's a 1 in the 16 plus a 1 in the 1's, that gives you 17. Questions on that? Are following with me? So, now, we created that column. To get this column, we're going to do the same thing as we did before, and actually we bring the same value down here. So notice it's exactly the same value here in the host portion on each of these coming down from the first row. So once you got the first row, I'm going to really show you a real cheap method in just a second. That we'll be able to do the rest of the table real fast. So now for the maximum number, we're again going to sit there and calculate that with the four positions put and that would be filled with ones that subtract one off from it, which give us one, 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 zero. And so that gives us zero, 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 one, three zeros, followed by one, 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 zero, which if we now numbered our columns across and added it all up together, we should get third. Is everybody follow on that? The 16 plus the 14. So the remaining part. So we got that one. And then the broadcast will be the next one. And it would be all ones in the host portion and the ones sitting there in the network portion, which will give us 31. Uh, we have one in the 16 plus one in the eight, four, twos, and ones, and that all adds up to 31. So we've got this now. Now, 
Anybody notice anything about how this is working? You know, or how the second row of numbers compares to the first row of numbers? One more. Huh? It's one more. No. Second, second row, all of those across there compared to all of these numbers across there. So they one have the same pair score. Huh? They all have the same pair score. Look at the decimal numbers. You see any relationship between that set of numbers on the second row compared to the set of numbers on the first row? The 16 to the 0, the 17 to the 1, starting to the 14, and the 31 to the 16. So it's what's the difference between row 1 and row 2? Because the companies that add them up, like if you because every one of these is 16 bigger than that row. Y'all see that? So once we know row one and we know the first number in row two, we actually can real quickly without doing everything we just did. That's where we sat there and kept the job as every three on row two. We can real quick, because all we're concerned about really is the decimal number, right? Because what do you put in the computer when you put an address in? You put it in decimal. You can real quick generate the rest of the table in decimal. And obviously you generate the binaries also because all that happens is when you see what your new number is here, the network portion is exactly the same on every one of them across the row as it was in the first position on the first one on the row, right? That doesn't change. With all across this row, the network portion is all zeros. This one is all zero, zero, 001. The next one is actually going to be zero, zero, 0010 zero, all the way across to the network portion. And we can generate the table right on down without having to sit there and calculate out each one of those. Now, when I learned this, the instructor was sitting there going through the whole table each time and calculating every one of them to get the numbers. And again, like I said on the certification exam, a time killer for a person that calculates the whole table and you only need to bring three, and there was actually 15 rows of numbers to calculate. Okay? Let's sit there and spend all that time doing that. Now, if they just knew what I just said, that your system here, that would cut time down, but they just cut off and didn't do the bottom part, they cut more time off. So, now we go through and build subnet three. We're increasing the binary portion in the network portion by one. So it becomes zero, zero, one, zero. Remember, if you're counting in binary, zero was four zeros. One in decimal to binary would be zero, 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 one. And then the next one would be two in decimal. And two in decimal to binary actually is a one in the second position, right? Now, be paying attention as you're doing on this of where we keep converting. Be careful. But remember, we've done playing with our binary values actually three ways today. One, to figure out how many columns are we going to borrow until we back count them. Label them backwards to figure out how many columns to borrow. It's purely for borrowing. But you do the one, two, four, eight. Okay? Second thing is, to calculate this whole value, we do it 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So on, okay? Get this one. But just to calculate here of what our next network number is to get this one to start the next row, we're just going to use these first four columns and calculate 1, 2, 4, 8 on that. But that's not calculating the real whole value. you follow on that? So we're playing around with those numbers. The 1248 staying consistent, it's always 1248 when we it But for purposes of borrowing for how many subnets, we're going to do it backwards. 
It's the only time we're doing it backwards. Working with this, as we're looking at the host portion and the network portion, and that's the problem here. Yeah, you're too close to this board and touching it. Um, it's live, so I must think I'm trying to draw on you or something. That we're just going to look at the network portion by itself like it was a standalone number. Does everybody see that part on that? So hopefully it makes it easier for you and doesn't complicate you. So I'm really not changing things on it, we're just subdividing things. It's sort of like when we did conversions. Also, I said when you're going from hexadecimal to binary, break it up into four bit sets there also and convert each hexadecimal number with a four bit binary plug. Okay, but then you put them together to find out what the real binary number was. So follow on that. So there's really shortcuts. So now it goes through and does the fourth one. So we're building on through this whole thing. I notice it keeps on doing what I just mentioned to you, which I think I really do right on the next slide. That we went from zero to 16. So we found out that when we borrowed four bits, it works by 16s. Now that changes on how many of the bits you borrow, what the magic number is. And then, so this went up by 16s all the way across, this one went up by 16s all the way across. And then for the fifth one, it's going to use 1 1 in the network portion. So it'll be 0 0 1 1. So that's actually in the real number, that's a 1 in the 16s and a 1 in the 30. It's going to be one zero zero. Sorry, I was looking at the previous one, um, which will give us a one in the sixty fours. Okay, but then we'll have a zero in sixteens and zero in thirty twos. But we had the other one. So now it would build across the same line that we had the zero one zero zero, and we put all zeros for the. Network portion, or as I call it, binary right here, which would give us 64 because of one in 64. And the first one would be the 0100, zero, 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 the network that's going to stay consistent across the subnet number, and one in the first one. And the highest one, three ones, and a zero, which is the highest usable host. And the broadcast would be 0100, zero, 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 and then all ones. And then the sixth one, you can increase it by one more and the four. So the one zero zero becomes a one zero one. And we'll be able to climb across the same way. The seventh one, add one more to it. And so it becomes zero one one zero and adds across. And notice this is the seventh subnet, but actually this number show as six because remember we're using zero also so it is the seventh one because zero was the first number and then up to six would actually be our seventh one. The eighth one converting to all ones and we get up to there. So we got a fully thing filling up right here. Um, And then here I tell you about for that pattern that I already told y'all about. Um, and that we look at the whole table and we see everything increases by 16 all the way down. Which the hard thing. You also have seen this is always increasing by one here. I'll show you a couple other pieces. This number here is always higher. By one, but that number is the next number. It's hard to this one, one higher than this. But really, the hard ones for you to get out of the whole time is the first and third one, the second and fourth, are just increasing whatever is the first and third or one. And the first is actually increasing the 
three is four or one. So there's a whole pattern to it. And then there's the tip for you that in this case, that 16s were a pattern. Now, let me go backwards for a second here. So off of this table, if this was our table we developed, Okay. When we assign machines to subnet zero, each of the machines can have an address that's given to it between 1 and 14. So it would be 192.168.1. The first machine we probably assign 1, the second machine 2, and so on up to 14. Although, which number you assign to which machine doesn't make any difference. So, although not, that's purely your setting up as you do it. Okay. Now, quite often, as far as your gateway, the places pretty often will use the first number for the default gateway, or they'll use the last number for the default gateway. So you usually got one of those reserved out there, okay? And that all depends on the organization you're worth doing this for, or your own choice on it. I have done it both ways. I know it used to be that I would do it with the highest number was the default gateway number I'd use, which before I subdated it would have been 254, or that a lot of times now that we use the smallest number. Default gateway, but it doesn't make any difference. Those are the numbers here between column two and column three that you can actually use on each subject. Okay? Now, the other thing I mentioned earlier is when you're choosing by the number of subnets that they told you they will hunt, eight subnets, you really don't want to set it up and choose a number that just allows you to have eight subnets. You really want to allow for some more subnets because it's going to grow. And you want to allow for that later on when they go, ooh, we need another subnet, but you got another one available. Okay. But you don't have to go back and redo this whole process again and re-address all of your machines. All right, now let's go the opposite direction. That was if we knew the number of subnets we wanted. Now we want to do if we know the number of hosts, and we'll find out how many subnets will be available to us. Okay, so we follow on that. So we know we want X number of hosts per subnet. In this case, we know the largest subnet, we want 17 hosts on that subnet. So I follow that piece. So our subnet mask, as it was given to us, is again 255 .5 .5 .5 .5 .5 .5 this time we're working with the network address of 10.10.2.0. Okay, so I've just chosen the network address. So in this case, we're counting from the right back to the left, normal. But the only time we do the other is when we know the number of subnets we want. We want. Now we can grade them on correctly. So we've got the ones, the twos, the fours, eights, and the sixteens called. PowerPoint really doesn't give you a very easy way to put numbers right underneath each other. But that's the best I can do and make it pretty clear and simple. So we add those all up together. So it tells us we will have 30 usable hosts um, host on each subnet. Okay? And we need to be able to have at least 17 so. That fits my other rule of allowed growth. Because you really can't do for one less because then you only have to pay out 14 usable hosts, not 30 and 14 won't allow us to have 17 hosts on each subject. So we have to go with keeping five columns. That leaves three bits for the subnets, which We'll do those first three columns, and that we go out there. And since we've got three bits that remain in the beginning, 
That's the one through four and eight. Okay. <coughs> Not one through four. One, two, and four. And the one, two, and four would give us seven subjects we can have. So they fall on that. So then we will build a similar chart on The first thing is we got to get the um, mask, submit mask on it. And that is, so we're using three of them for the submits. Remember we said we keep five, we can borrow three for the submits for it. So that's those three. So that's the 128, 64, and 32s. And this we get 224, which goes to create our subnet mask. So now our subnet mask will be 255, 255, 255, like 224. And I remember what like, rule again, you can't fall the last two bits. So now we'll build this one three. Um, and that I've got the right IP address up there on this one. And that we'll go through and do the same thing again. So our first line will start off with three bits for the subnet, zero, 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 zero. And then we'll have the beginning spot with the zero, 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 one. So the network portion of it is a net actual number with this. And the first usable U number will be one for that first subnet. The last one, we know we've only got the last, that we're using the last five columns for the host. So now we'll put in there four ones and a zero. Again, the biggest number less one. So five ones less one is zero. Is four ones and a zero, which gives us three else, which gives us third, because that's a one and a two, three, fours, eights, and sixteens that goes together and you get first. The broadcast one, same way as before, all zeros because that's the subject number in the first three bits, and then all ones in the last five bits, and that becomes 31. We'll start the second row by adding one in the subnet area, which is only three bits, so that becomes zero, zero, one. And at that point, we got 32. So we're on the one and the 32, so we've got 32. Based on what I've already shown you, what is going to be the decimal number here is right here. Right here, of course, decimal number goes. We get this chart. 32. Huh? 32. Not 32. You're close. 33, that's going to be what? 60. 62. Good. Two. Okay. Y'all follow on that? And you see where you can do the decimal number right on down, which is really what you're concerned about. That's the numbers you want. You got all this binary stuff up there. Well, that's how you get to the decimal number. But that's not what you're wanting to know to actually do your job of addressing all these machines. But you're not going to address them in binary. You're going to address them in decimal. Okay? So you're really only concerned as the end result is the numbers that are in parentheses. The rest of it is how you get there and how it works. But it's not what you're needing. Okay? Because what you need to know is the decimal numbers so that when Ms. West says set up 
addresses for those machines back in the room, back of the room, and that's one subnet, and that is the third subnet and whatever. You can tell her what numbers to put on each machine. Does that make sense? No. She doesn't want to know at that point what the binaries are. And a lot of people out there doing it are going to go, what in the world are you telling me? You try to tell it to them in binary. But you know how to do it correctly, and you develop the whole plan, and you don't have to sit there and use some program to do it. You can type it right there. Increase the next byte, not by. Uh, it's not going to class you up. By one. And so then it'll be zero, zero, 001. Because that's the three bits we're keeping for a network portion. And so that becomes 32, like you said a moment ago. We up this one, put the one into it, and it becomes 33. And then that one should become 62, like you told us a moment ago. Let's see if he's right or wrong. So the maximum one, we put that there, and it becomes 62, right? There's our 62. And then we calculate it the same way here. We'll put all ones in the host portion for the broadcast. And we've got a 001 in the network portion. So that becomes 63. And 63. And now you know, the rest of it. The, um, remember, we're using only three bits, so that becomes 010, because 010 is the next number up from 001. Because remember, 2 is the second column, so switch over. Remember, the other part on it is that linear binary. 1 is your largest single digit binary number, so if you add 1 to 1, it always becomes, moves, carries the 1 over to the next column, and a 0 in that column. Just like when you add 1 to 9, 9 being the largest decimal number, you, carry a one, you put a 0 in that column and carry a 1 over to the next column, right? So it's exactly the same arithmetic you already knew before you came in here, okay? You just haven't changed to a different number system. And so that one builds across on the same principle, but really using the 32 is right on down the line on it. Then for the fourth subnet, it'd be the 011. And uh, it calculates all the way across, increasing by 32s again. And hopefully, I have no errors down in there. Um, doesn't line up quite as cleanly when we start getting the three decimal, through the three digit numbers. Um, then the fifth one becomes 100. And so it calculates across there. If you have questions, stop me. The sixth one's one zero one zero one one zero one. Sorry, uh, where that extra zero came from, and it calculates out. Still on the same principle. Seventh one, and then we pretty much filled up what we can get on a PowerPoint. Obviously, in this case, we would go on that this is actually getting up to. The maximum number here, okay? You can go to the 8, 20, and that's it. And so that gets you subnet. Does everybody follow on how to do the basic subnet? Given the number of subnets or given the number of posts? But now I'm going to throw you the last little bit that's in the chapter, which is the last couple of pages, where they talk about DLSM and it's Two pages at the very end of the chapter. Not much on it anymore. It used to be really important, but still mentioned to you. So I want to mention this one to you. Okay? But you shouldn't have anything really on the test other than knowing it exists and what it does. Okay? It's variable length subnet masking, the LSM. Be aware of that. Okay? In this case, previous case, all of our subnets have the same mask tool and the same number of posts per subnet. 
Now think about it in the real world. And that was the way it was done for a long time. Okay? In the real world, are all of your subnets going to be the same size? No. Some subnets need more post on it, and some subnets need less post on it. And I told you there's even the subnets that are between routers that only need two hooks. So if you did it the way we just did it, you'd end up with some of those subnets having a large wastage, just like we've already complained about IP version 4. Okay? Because you would have held a number of hosts that you couldn't use, but were assigned to that subnet. Because you never get those additional addresses on the subnet. And you had to choose from the largest subnet, okay, and set up the whole thing by it. What VLSM does, it will allow you to create subnets with different numbers of hosts per subnet, which is why it's variable. Okay, so the number of bits we're going to borrow varies on. So in my example here, one subnet needs 65 hosts, and the second subnet needs two hosts each. We've done it the way we first did it. Both of the subnets we have at least 65 host addresses for them, which means the second subnet we've got at least 63 wasted addresses. That's not a real smart move to make. You don't want to be wasting stuff out there. Okay. So now what we can do is instead we will initially subnet for the number of for the subnets that have the largest number of hosts. So we will first do a subnet to create a subnet that's big enough for the largest number. And then we'll have an extra subnet, and it might be one, it might be three subnets that all have that largest number. Okay? So we create terms of that. But then, so you'll find what your largest number of hosts is, and create subnets from that. Your last subnet, that's going to not be one that you'd actually be using. You got left. What we would do then is submit the submit. That's not that difficult. Okay? It's just doing exactly the same thing we've already done, it's just doing it off of a submit address. So now we're going to borrow bits. We're going to borrow bits and then we're going to borrow more bits. Y'all follow on that? But it sounds complicated when you first look at it. But it's not really that complicated. And I really don't even show you the steps in the book that I mentioned about it. Okay? But I'm going to go ahead and briefly show you real quickly on it. But that's the big things to get. Okay? Is that it's subnetting subnets. Do I follow on that? And that each of your subnets can have a different number of maximum number of hosts to them to reduce the wastage. That's what it does. And that's what you would be asked about. Okay? After you've taken this class two years ago, you'd have to know how to do it. But now, as we're moving more to IP version 6 and stuff, that, that's drifting on also. It's still there, and you might still run into it. But as long as you know how to subnet, you can do the LCM also because it's, you're just submitting subnets. Okay? And think about it, really. The network address you were given, that's actually a subnet anyway of the big set of networks in the whole world. But you were just given a part of the whole big thing, so you were already doing that. Okay? It's just somebody else did that initial piece for you. So in this case, we're going to make two subnets. Remember I said that we you get one subnet with 65 hosts and one subnet with two hosts. So we need to be able to have 65 hosts. So we're going to label up far enough to get 65 hosts. Keep. Now, host, when you're keeping host and when you're borrowing, 
you can borrow just one bit. Okay? However, what's kept in terms of the host, the host always has to be at least two bits long, which I'd already mentioned to you. Okay, so in this case, we're going to borrow one bit. Because we add this all up, you see we've got to keep seven bits. We will have 65 hosts. I'll take 65 on purpose for that. Okay. So we're going to borrow one bit, and that's going to create two subbits. So here we go. First line was set up just like we've said before. Okay. We're going to have zero in the network portion that we borrowed. All zeros for the network address. Six zeros and a one for the first usable host. Five ones and a zero for the second host. That's five. That's six ones and a zero for the second host. That is the last host, but for our purposes, to be. No, for the last host, it'll be the six ones, not the second host. And then the broadcast address is a zero followed by all ones. And then there's our subnet mask for this subnet. Y'all got that? That's what changes on you as you're going on this now. And then our second one is this set of addresses, but we're not using as that subnet. What we're going to do is we're going to subnet this subnet, because we've not used it for real purposes out there, so it's usable. So we take this one, which is the 192.168.3.128. Subnet, and we're going to work off of it. So, in the network portion now, we've actually got one zero in the first one because when we looked at the first two position, the first position, it had one. Okay, those should be both just two zeros. Okay, because that's not network portion. So we've got a one was in what was already there. Now prior on the other stuff we always had zero. Now we've got a one there. And we're going to borrow a bit. To, that we're going to borrow five bits actually. But we want to set up now a subnet that only has two hosts on it. Guess what? We only got two, two bits. So that means we've got five bits here we're going to be able to borrow. We'll fill those in with zero. So zero still for the host number on the network. We'll start with a one here in the last two positions. My only use all on one position here. This, this one should be bolted also. Um, and then we get there and there. So the first one, first subnet for usable hosts are 129 and 30. We've actually got a number of these sitting here now. And so on down. And so we've got the next one that goes on usable address of the 133, 134. But we can have a number of subnets coming off our route, which could be possible. Okay, as I've already seen in some of your assignments, you've had multiple connections coming off the route to other routers. Okay. And so now we can borrow them all down and keep on going. But notice on this, this set of subnets all have a subnet mask of 255, 255, 5.192, and it's 3.255. This one had 0.128. So you see where, but now we've made more efficient use of it. We're not wasting. But we need that sub network just two addresses. Well, now we've still got the rest of these on down here that are available to us. That got two to them also. If we had some other sub network, a bigger number that would be well, had 65 and then one that had 31 on it, we would have given them 31 here. And then the extra sub net on it, we would need 
next two. So that again came down to the twos. Does everybody follow the idea of the OSM? But don't worry about all the calculations on it. The big part is no, you can get more efficient use of your sub minutes. That's the big thing. That's why you're doing it. Okay? You're not wasting space that you were wasting before address that you were wasting before. And that what you're doing is you're subnetting the subnets. Okay? Now, that can be carried away on some extremes. And if you were to ever go for CCNP, which is the next level of Cisco certification of our CCNA, which is class of first one of 44, the next thing comes after that CCNP. Um, which is a Cisco certified network program. Um, you actually have to do subnetting different subnets within the subnets. Okay? I took the first class on that back in 2002. And it was a two week class for me going 40 hours a week on it. We went eight hours a day, five days a week. And then we went back to our room and we studied every night, four hours a night. So it was a heavy class. Um, and there was a lot of stuff I learned on it. And we actually got a lot deeper into this. Uh, I'd love to go back and take that class again. Um, there could be a lot more I could learn in it. And I did really well with it. I made like 98 on the final exam. And I did the final layout. I was one of the first two people finished on the final layout. We had two hours to do it. He comes in, I was doing it an hour. And this lady, I believe it was a lady from Montana, but she was done about the same time as me. I'm not sure if she was done first or if I was done first. But we were done before everybody else in the class, there was 20 or so people in the class. But we walked out the hall and talked to her a little bit, and she said she was heading on back to the room. So she packed up to get your plane back. And I hung around to tell two of the people by and had to hang around for a few while before other people came out of the bridge. Um, unfortunately, that's the ninth DM that the ladder fell off under me. And so by the time I got recovered enough to go take a test or whatever on it, that I forgot the stuff it was several months later. Actually, I did take the exam that summer at Cisco's convention conference. That June, because it gave me a chance to get free, and I could barely miss passing. And I had to do anything else with all that top. I wish I had been able to take it like a plan had been that Monday or Tuesday after I got back from that break. Um, but even then, I would have told you I'd love to take a class at the end because there was so much more in it that I didn't catch. So that is the OSM. No, it's variable weight subnet mask. Notice your subnet mask are different for the different subnets. In subnetting, which we did the first part of the class, every one of those subnets had the same subnet mask. Okay? Know how to do that first part, both in terms of borrowing from host and borrowing from the network, and how many gifts to keep for the network portion. Depending on whether you know how many subnets you want or how many things per subnet. Any questions on all of that? Let's see what else I've got to do. And that's it. Which is what I thought was. Now y'all know what I have to go teach this again at 11 o'clock to the online class as I did. This week I'm having to do this session so you all know how much information it is. You know it took us the full time Monday just to do the first part of the chapter and now we're just about used to full time again today. It would have been nice if I could have gotten my stuff going quicker, but I just didn't get here as quick. Although he can tell you I was here 10 minutes before class started. And started on trying to log on and everything, but y'all's machines are not fast. And y'all know how long it takes for when we log on and then how long it takes for platform install. And obviously to do the camera, I have to have blackboard ready. So that takes it seems like 10 minutes to get both part to get 
Windows working and then get Black work. But like I say, the other part is if you want to watch it, the PowerPoint again, but you can go through the PowerPoint itself. It's sitting in course documents. The other thing is if you want to watch my video where I talked my way through it last fall, I've got the link for you in assignments, I believe. Okay, before you can go on that, and he'll ask for you to register. Just register, and you can put, and that it doesn't even check on that on you. You just fill out the box on it, and then it lets you write on it, you will it. You don't have to be a member of CIN or anything, and CIN is actually free. I was supposed to put structures. Okay, so if you want to watch where I actually talked through it, you know. And then when I do the one today, I'm going to record it too. Okay? If there's not any other questions, then I'm going to let y'all read with this reminder. If you have not done some assignments, you need to get them in. If you have not finished the packet tracer, you need to get it finished. Packet tracer grades were transferred again yesterday afternoon. So you can look in Blackboard and see. Have I done everything I was supposed to do in packet tracing? The Jews are supposed to take the two test, I think it is, and do the course feedback. So make sure you've done the course feedback too. Any questions? And then if you miss the test, get a hold of me, send me an email, and tell me you need the test reopen, and I'll reopen it and you take it. However, everything's growing, late penalties on it this week. There's a 15 point a week penalty on weightless. So the sooner you get stuff done, the better off you are. See y'all Monday morning.